You are now tuned into Mixation Radio Live. The views and opinions of the guests and the hosts you hear on Mixation Radio Live are not necessarily those of the staff and the management of Mixation Radio Live, its sponsors or advertisers. We on? Chris, what's up? What's up, T's? What's up? <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Rum TV. How y'all doing? <laughs> y'all, we live tonight. Chris is, um, he taking down some more notes so we can have a, a good show for y'all. Look, I was kind of caught off guard with this. Speaking to the mic. I was caught off guard with this responsibility today. <laughs> you but, was caught um, off guard. I feel like I'm here. I'm ready. Okay. He's here. He's here. So, um... We're going to do a little icebreaker segment. Um, well, if you guys don't know by the description, um, tonight's show is on educating our people as far as saving money, um, becoming an entrepreneur. What else, Chris? What am I forgetting? Because you already got a lot over there. About saving money, educating your children on um, the transformation from young adulthood to adulthood. Preparing them for the things that they're going to be facing in life. Um, life is so much bigger than, you know, learning how to drive and having a girlfriend and being out on your own and all of those things that we want to be grown to do. Um, and then, you know, you, you, you get those things and you run into those obstacles and you don't have people. Some of us don't have people in our lives to show us the right way to go about these things. And you, when you run into these obstacles, you end up putting yourself behind the eight ball. Um with different situations so we're going to just talk a little bit about how to prepare our children for those things um and we're going to give out a couple shout outs to some people that was doing some really good things too um so it's going to be a great show it's going to be a great show you ready i'm ready i'm ready yeah because we don't want to leave um we don't want to leave our children's education up to the school system not we're not gonna put it all on the teachers, right? No, we're not doing that. We said the system, not the teachers. <laughs> There's think, a difference. But but that's that's part of the issue is that we're taking advantage of the fact that we have the school system to fall back on and it's not the teacher's job to teach a child every single thing. There's a lot of things that the parents should be teaching their children. And that's what we're gonna touch on today. I like to. So would we're you, gonna kick you it off. First wanna hit on. Um well, I wanted to give a shout out. I'm trying to get the Oh, we give a shout out. Shout out shout to Tim out. Webb and Rache Bay. I think that's his name. These two young men um, purchased four duplexes and one single family home in South Carolina. Um, and this, their whole approach was to just kind of build up their community, the black community where they're from. Um, these two young men are, are college friends. Mm -hmm. And so the, for the four duplexes and the one single family home, they said that's a total of 26 apartment units that they are building up um, and, you know, just trying to give back to their community. I thought that was extremely commendable on their part because we always talk about building that brand and that, that black uh, long-term wealth mm -hmm. and, and at, in the college level, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, it's huge. That they took the the time out of their lives to to make that happen, so I wanted to give a shout out to them, and just remind everybody that you know it's it's some it's one thing to talk about it and to idealize these things, but to really put action behind your words is so powerful because you know even though we're giving this shout out right here, we want to see so many more people do things like that. So we can shout you guys out too because it's it's a, a really beautiful thing to build that long term wealth. Absolutely. Um, for our communities. And, and it doesn't matter if you're black, white, Hispanic, um, Chinese. Like, it, it doesn't matter. You yeah. want to give back in, in any way that you can and be a positive influence on the world. I agree, Chris. I agree. You know, it's good to put something positive in, <laughs> <laughs> in people's minds, you know, because there's a lot of negativity going on, you know. And again, I know we've mentioned on this show before. A lot of people were looking at this pandemic like it was a, a, a curse, like it was the end of the world, mm -hmm. you know. But so many people have made some boss moves. That's true. I, I, it real. was so many people that, I, you know, I reached out to. Um, <laughs> thank you, God, thank you, thank thank you God. for that. <laughs> so many people that I reached out to during this pandemic, just checking on them, seeing how they was, especially with everything that's going on. Right. And, um, you know... Okay. 
every conversation is pretty much the same as how you doing haven't talked to you in a while a long time we'll speak whatever mm-hmm. and for for as many people that we had somebody respond with um you know all of the chaos and craziness that they dealing with um, financially or health wise whatever's going on it was really good for me personally mm-hmm. to be able to say like you know I have not seriously, truly been negatively impacted by Mm -hmm. COVID-19. That's a blessing. Um, That's a blessing. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. It's it's been such a blessing that we are here and that we have this platform. Um, I believe I started co-hosting Rum TV. What is this? Eight weeks ago now? So two months? Wow. Um, Wow, time is flying. I know, right? Wow, hey, (laughs) Rum TV. (laughs) Truly a, a, a blessing for me. I love being on Rum TV. I love co-hosting with you. Thank um, you. Shout out to th- episode 12, Joe. <laughs> hey, Chris, we in there. Shout out to episode 12. <laughs> episode 12, baby. You can't <laughs> people. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's so many things I could be grateful for right now. I feel like I'm about to give a speech for Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> but no, for real, like, you know, um, I, I just have not had... Uh, negativity come my way as far as COVID-19 goes. Um, I have had some family members get sick and, and you know, contract the virus. I'm so sorry But they, they made it through. Yeah. Um, and, and I've not been slowed down. I'm not letting nothing stop me. We full steam ahead. I always tell Tease, like, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Mm-hmm. And we grind until we get to a jillion. So. A jillion. A jillion, y'all. Y'all I heard mean of a jillion. For real, a jillion. And, I, and so let me tell you why I say a jillion. Um, you and I already had this conversation off time. air, but for anybody who has serious aspirations of being an entrepreneur, being a millionaire, um, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. I have those same aspirations. So, in my mind, we have a lot of people in the world. You can name several people that are billionaires right now. You don't hear a lot about trillionaires, but if I'm only aiming to be a trillionaire right now, by the time I can actually acquire that status. You will have trillionaires, plenty of them, right? So we're going to aim higher than that. I don't know no jillionaires. I don't know if any of my followers or anybody listening in knows some jillionaires. But if y'all know some, <laughs> shout them out and let us know. Okay? Cause we want We want to congratulate them as well. But we aiming for a jillion right now. On the heels of you saying that, um, and the topic of the show, you know, we want to educate our people. I strongly believe that... You should surround yourself with people, with like-minded people, I should say. You know, like, I really do believe that, what was that? I'm sorry, it's a day. again. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that um, bad company corrupts good character, you know? Here you, you go with your, <laughs> your little saying. I'm just, look, I'm serious. <laughs> just, just hear me no, out for a second. No, but you're right, you're right. Hear me out for a second, Okay. We, we already know that, you know, Christ sat with those who just weren't there. Right. You know, they dibble and dabbled in whatever it is that they did. But at the same time, when you're around like-minded people and it's like, okay, yo, teach, teach me what you know. Mm-hmm. I'll teach you what I know. Like, let's just feed off of each other. Let's feed off each other's energy, you know. Like... A lot of times I hear it's not what you know, it's who you know. and Sometimes can, that's true. Okay, sometimes it's true. Majority of the time it's true. They can bring resources to you and you can do and vice versa, right. you know. But if you're around people, you want to be, what you call it, a gajillionaire? A gajillionaire, gajil- 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 yeah. <laughs> you got to get it right, T. Gajillionaire. Gil- it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a jillionaire. Yeah, just take out I the mean, B and add a G. Got you. It it doesn't make no sense for you to be around people who's hanging on the corner. No, that's facts. For real. Like, right. I mean, like, and it's just no disrespect to people that decide to be on the corner. But, like, I, that's not my goal. That's not. That's not the grind that you. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I got you. And, you know, fast, fast money isn't always good money. That's true, too. And it. What'd you say, Sean? Alright baby, All right. thank you for staying on this long <laughs> Heal up bro um, <clears throat> No, she's absolutely right Fast money isn't always good money And <laughs> I always believed in easy come, easy go So if you ain't had to work hard for it To be honest with you, it's already on its way out the door for you um, And you know, the time that you put in It's gonna work out for you no matter what So 
you had to like she said stay around like-minded people and prepare yourself for the success that you want because if you're not prepared for it once you get that success it can derail you for sure and that's not what you want I'm a strong believer in that though like if you're not prepared and you're not ready for the things that you're wishing for you praying for you hoping for you asking for yeah like it's gonna eat you up because it's, it's just gonna come at you you're gonna be like yo like you biting off more than you can chew yeah you know when uh luke was on the show and he was basically saying like you know educate yourself mm-hmm. educate yourself on where you want to be what you into you know like what it takes to get there yeah because it's not easy you know rome was not built in a day mm-hmm. nor night nor week yeah you know it takes time to build your brand to build your foundation you know to put in work for your growth like it's not handed to you it's not something you can just like hey all right i do it tomorrow like yo i'm always thinking about rum tv yep and and when you say that that kind of brings me back to something that um fantasia says and i can't think of his name right now but Ken? Yeah. Ken. When he, the when Ken he was doll. talking, he had said, uh, he was talking about, you know, leading the household, leading leading the family, mm-hmm. and how far ahead a man has to be, the leader has to be, in order to not just lead the family, but to educate mm-hmm. so that everybody else, including his, the, you know, their children, but yeah. his wife can also do the things or think on the same level that he's thinking on. Yeah. So, you know, that's why. I, when we talk about grinding and you know all the things that we do mm-hmm. to prepare ourselves you had to be preparing every second of every day right you you taking a break but you're not really taking a break because if you're taking a break you're not preparing you're not getting better that means you like to me you're getting worse um and it's it's so much that you don't know that you don't know mm-hmm. you know what i mean so yeah you always got to be educating yourself um looking stuff up if you having a conversation with somebody they use a word and you don't know what that word means look up the word um you know repetition is everything it is and and it's so important Mm -hmm. especially you know for people in america i mean if you think about all the things that we're facing especially in this trying time today this been going on for hundreds of years yeah and i feel like it's kind of sad that it's been going on this long Mm -hmm. and we haven't gotten it right yet because to me we're doing too much of this insane belief that doing the same thing over and over and over again and respect expecting different results exactly these things need to change if we need to pass laws or bills or whatever the case may be that might be a good idea that's great that's fine but how many laws and bills have we passed already the emancipation proclamation Mm -hmm. freed the slaves now we've given all people equal rights Mm -hmm. um but yet we are still facing the same inequalities exactly and that's why i'm saying like we what what are we doing people and and that's really what i want to ask is what are we doing everybody keep preaching vote 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 and i'm not saying we shouldn't but what i'm saying is is that what's really moving the needle Mm mm-hmm I really just don't think it is. Not exactly. I, I not not the so same either. way that it needs to. Yeah, I don't think so, so either. I mean, I like listen. It sucks. It sucks to listen to people break your neck to go out there and vote, and the person that you voted for is not even in the office. That's true, and that's why I mean, even down to that, so much due diligence has to be done. So much research has to be done, knowing what's going on in mm-hmm. the world. Um, I know my dad gets on me all the time because I don't watch the news every morning like, mm-hmm. like you know, adults do. And to be honest, oh, we're adults. Yeah, I, we're adults. <laughs> absolutely. You mean but... like old people do? Say no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I just wanna, joking. I don't want to do that to you. I'm just but, joking. But I'm I love is, y'all. I do, I'm just kidding. I needed you better at watching the news more. I do try to keep up with the things that are going on in the world, um, and mm. I have to be better at like. A, like he always says watching the news and really paying attention to things that's going on Mm -hmm. not really falling for the media bias but understanding the things and the informative information that's on there for us but at the same time it's kind of hard though well so that's true um because at this age we don't really truly have that interest for it we are looking forward to so many other things but when when you really sit back and you see exactly how important that is 
then you can kind of appreciate the information that's being passed. Okay, so us. thank you, babe. So dig a little deeper into that. Thank you, Broadus. So and y'all give it up for Broadus. He need a hand clap. Thanks, Broadus. Thank you, Mr. Wilbur. <laughs> My bad, Chris. No, you good. So <laughs> to dig a little bit deeper. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to go deep into the politics. No, you don't have to. I just, just need to know. Like, I two. just need an understanding. Okay, so for you, for this example, mm-hmm. we're going to touch politics, but we're not going to go deep into that. I got the you. two presidential candidates that we have, mm-hmm. um, there are people who absolutely do not like uh, the Republican candidate. Mm-hmm. However, they believe that his business views is going to help America through the pandemic because our economy is being drained by the pandemic. I mean, a lot of people are still out of work. A lot of companies are not able to continue their business the way they initiated and planned to, and they feel like his views are essential to us being successful economically. Mm -hmm. Now, you also have the racial injustices going on in the world, and a lot of people believe that those things um, along with other issues are going to be corrected by the Democratic um, representative. so mm-hmm. it's things like that and although you may not completely agree with everything from one candidate you had to kind of pick the lesser of two evils in a sense um, and so like I know that sounds crazy but the reality of it is those are the things that are going to you know kind of be transgressional in the the you process in another way right because either way one of them are yeah. going to get elected you know what i mean so for anybody yeah. who's choosing not to vote you you kind of hurting us in a sense you know what i mean but but if you are choosing one because of one point and not looking at all the points you're hurting yourself and you're hurting us too you get what i'm saying and that's what i mean it's so much deeper than just oh if we don't vote for you know the republican uh candidate then the economy's gonna fail mm-hmm. well if you vote for the democratic uh candidate then we're gonna continue to deal with the social injustices you know what i mean mm-hmm. there's four more years in this or or eight potentially if you go with the different mm-hmm. candidates so those are the type of things you have to think about um and it, it's a really tough this election is is one of the biggest elections in a long time. I mean, even when Obama got elected, I feel like that was a really big election. Mm-hmm. But like this election is going to be huge, especially because of what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. So um, you got to do your research. You got to know what you want for America. You got to think about the projection of America. And a lot of people can't do that. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was talking about. As far as being a leader, being able to see that many years down the line, can you see America twenty in 2024? We don't know what it's going to look like. Mm-hmm. Who, who can tell me what is America going to look like in 2024? We didn't Nobody, even know what 2020 was going to be. That, like. that's, that's exactly my point. We yeah. don't know what to expect for tomorrow, and you have to use your, your background knowledge and your history to kind of help you determine what's coming tomorrow. So it's things like that. Um that's that it's scary to think about but it's it's serious stuff that you should it's think our about life. Mm-hmm. it's our life so you got to plan it plan it accordingly if you want to get to a jillion dollars you got to plan for it that's so that's true. what that's what i want to talk about that's what i want to have people work on help people work on and i'm not perfect i i don't um i don't have the answers for everything but i work on myself i mm-hmm. work on uh, being disciplined and right. doing the things that I'm supposed to do, saving the money I'm supposed to save, uh, be looking to buy a house in a couple of years. So, like all of those things that you have to do, you have to work on, you have to prepare for, for sure. And, and continue to do your research and educate yourself. You, you and I both know I had a situation the other day that I did not ask enough questions mm-hmm. and do my due diligence on it, and it burnt me. Yeah. So, just another, you know, inactive of it's a lesson do learned. what you're supposed to do. And things will work out for you. So, um, we're going to kind of move forward with that. Um, speaking on a young man named Lyndon Cameron. This is a young 13-year-old man with some mental disabilities. Mm. And um, so, I, th- I believe the story goes like this. He is from Salt Lake City, Utah. And his mom um, had to return to work. 
and he has abandonment issues. So mm. this was the first time she's returning to work yeah. in a long time. Mm. And um, he dis- he had an episode that evening, and she had to call an emergency unit to assist her in calming him down. Well, that emergency unit did not happen to be a medical team. It happened to be some police officers who went inside of their home to try to ask him to calm down. Mm-hmm. I believe he may or may not have made some threats. There's no video out about this, but in the end, he was able to escape the home and run from the police where they shot him they outside sh- of hold his on. home. How old was he? 13. 13. 13 years old. 13. They confirmed he had no weapons. Mm. So I'm just, you know, really confused. Why was this young man shot? I'm sorry, and I, I'm not making a race thing. I just need to know. He's white. He's white. He's white. Hmm. Not a black man. He's white. And he has mental issues or no? Yes. He um, does. Like what? I actually want to. Let me give me one second. Let me look at it because. But like, even still, like that is like no excuse. It's none. Um, was the wait? Was the mom there? Was she at work? She, I believe, she was at the home when he got shot. He's hospitalized right now. This oh is. That's Lyndon, what you sent me today. Lyndon has autism, a treatable mental health emergency. That's what it says. Um, that is ridiculous. I want to go back and look at it again, though. But it, it, it really touched me that they built this story because I know we had um, different views on this whole police brutality thing. And yeah. Yeah. Um, right now, we are all screaming Black Lives Matter. I would strong believe in the Black Lives Matter movement. But I want to also let people know that when you say Black Lives Matter, it is not to say that we matter more than anyone else. Mm-hmm. It's to reiterate that when people say all lives matter, all lives cannot matter until Black Lives Matter just as much as anyone else's life. And so for this instance, with this um, white young man, my heart goes out to him and his family because it, to me, it, I, I can't imagine the explanation these officers have for why they would shoot him. I mean, I can't fathom that either. But on the heels of what you just said, I do feel like all lives do matter. 100%. However, all lives are not the ones who are under attack. That And that's true. So I get the... Black Lives Matter thing, which I want to stop saying that now that I know the founders. But excuse me. So I I can't stop saying it necessarily, and here's why: I, Black name, lives mean something. Black lives are valuable. We can say a bunch of things about black people. Obviously, everybody matters. Obviously, Black Lives Matter. But sometimes, like Antoine was saying about the gift situation. If you don't understand the story behind it or you don't know why, how could you sit there and accept something? No, I don't disagree with that. But what I what I want to say is that it's it's very that's a very touchy thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, I know me personally, I had a conversation with somebody. I'm not going to say who it is, but I had a conversation with somebody who is white. Yeah. And I talk to this person very often. Mm -hmm. um, But one of the conversations we had touched on the Black Lives Matter topic. And I I just have such a hard time understanding why not all white people, but some white people, when when they want to diversify that conversation, the first thing they want to say is that black people kill more black people than white people kill black people. And if you look at the statistics, there's more white people killing white people than black people killing white people as well. So what what exactly are you saying? Is it more white people killing white people than black people killing black people? Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is this is a cultural thing. People don't understand that. So mm-hmm. you bring, you, you're changing the argument. You're changing the Who, me? conversation. No, not you. What oh. I'm saying is when, <laughs> when a person brings in more black people kill black people than white people kill black people. Mm-hmm. The reason for that is because culturally, more people are in competition with people of their same skin color. Yeah. And, and what that means is a, a lot of people, you know, bring up white privilege. Mm-hmm. We all know what that is. Yeah. 
a black person can't get white privilege therefore you're not competing with a white man for white privilege when y'all compete for a job the competition isn't seriously a competition because the person who has the edge is the white man Mm -hmm. same so so in that context when you are talking about the diversity of black people killing black people white people killing white people it makes sense that more black people are killing black people y'all are competing for i don't want to say specifically the same women or the same things but your cultures are the same and it makes perfect sense to me why that would be i just think you're changing the argument when you say that this black people killing black people has nothing to do with black lives matter what that comes from is the police brutality on unarmed black men and if we stop changing the context and the diversity of what that statement means then we can have a real conversation about it but it's so easy for some of our white counterparts to say oh well, you know black people kill black people more black people kill black people than white people they say that because they're uncomfortable having the conversation and it makes it a little bit more comfortable to say hey y'all don't care about your lives either that's what they really saying so when he said that to me I kind of was taken aback by it like you know what this ain't even a conversation worth having mm-hmm. because truthfully whether you are ignorant to what's going on mm-hmm. or you just don't want to talk about it yeah. the bottom line is you don't really care because if you cared you would just educate yourself ask a question figure it out you know what I mean and yeah. you would not be having a conversation jump into another conversation to make yourself more comfortable it's a very uncomfortable conversation but it needs to be had so that we can all be on the same page and understand that we are all human that's the bottom line I mean I get that Chris and you know you, you and I are normally like here scary but I feel like you know on the heels of you saying, like, you know, you understand why, you know, um, our black people are feeling like, you know, they got to... Are you saying it's okay to have that crab in their barrel mindset? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that when you say that black people kill black people or more black people kill black people than white people kill black people, what are you saying? When a white person says that in, in a rebuttal of an argument of black lives matter. No, I know that, but you say it's more of a cultural thing, right? It, it is a cultural thing. The reason why more black people kill black people is because if you look at the communities, they live together. The altercations are happening between amongst each other. Does that make sense? But that's the problem, and, and other people are not blind to it. No, and I'm not saying that they are, but what I'm saying is... I know you're not saying that, but I'm saying I really feel like it's no excuse. And if black people don't like that other people are saying that about us... You, you, some, you gotta take accountability Like you gotta look at yourself No you that's know? 100% true But my, my point in what I'm saying is that Let that be exactly what it is And that's something that needs to be corrected But you're still changing the argument You're changing the conversation Our conversation on the table right now Is mm-hmm. that Black Lives Matter We're not talking about black people killing black people We're saying that Black Lives Matter So when you say to me in a rebuttal that more black people kill black people than white people kill black people. You just changed the argument. You're not talking about what we talk about. So, so when that, we say Black Lives Matter, we strictly talking about police brutality. That yes, and and if you so then let's just label it as police brutality on black people. Black <clears throat> Lives Matter has to matter to black people in order for anything to change. There's no unity. There's not enough unity in our community. That's what I feel like. And we're sitting here and we're like, okay, we got Rum TV and we're trying to build up each other. We're trying to put other people on and help them out with their brands and, you know, with their businesses or whatever it is that they got going on. You know, we could go out here and they'd be like, oh, no, nah, I don't like you. Like, who you think you ought to have a radio station in Baltimore and they want to do something? Is that okay? Black lives don't matter. It no, has to no, matter no. to, it has I, to I'm matter to disag- each other. I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. What I'm saying is that it's easy to put off that conversation when you bring in something totally different are you aware of where black lives matter came from yeah that, that's exactly where it came from it's the police brutality no i mean like who actually started black lives matter oh um like the hashtag does uh, 
Have you heard? Let's look it up. Let's look it up. <laughs> Do our research. Look, we know that it was women who are into the same sex that started Black Lives Matter. And their plan was basically to dismantle the black man being in a household. So you're trying to come up with a phrase or a saying to down black men, but you saying black lives matter. That doesn't make sense. So is that where it came from? You didn't hear about it? No, I did not. Yes. Okay, educate us. So black lives matter came from my stream. It was like three, three lesbians, I can say. Okay. Yeah. It was like it was all on social media, all of that, especially during the time when the whole Vince's crab house crap was going on. And how long ago was that? What was that? And it was like what? February? Two? No, well, well, it had to be May. Two months ago? Two May. or three months ago? I could be wrong, but so but Black wow, Lives Tom Matter. Wow, time is really flying. Black Lives Matter happened way before that. No, I'm not saying that's when it came out. I'm saying it came out that it was started from those three. Then they had, they was all taking pictures of them. The whole article came out. Like, they was like, oh, everybody need to stop saying this Black Lives Matter because of where it came from. Oh, I like the way that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, their plan was to basically dismantle the black man. Like, they don't believe in it should be a mom, a, 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 a dad, a mom, and a child. It needs to, it could be whatever it is or however they want it to be. But they're going to say that because that's what they're into. Okay, so. I, let me correct myself on what I'm saying because that's not what I was talking about. What I was talking about was the police Insane. brutality and that Black Lives Matter movement. Um, you see, you got to be specific. Years, I'm serious. Years ago. I mean, and it's it's bigger than. So it originated before there was police brutality. And you said, oh, yeah, I heard about that. See? Thank you, Nanu. I was, I was going, yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> um, but no, that that happened years ago. I mean, Emmett Till. Um, mm. What was that? Nineteen fifty-five. I think Emmett Till's uh, incident happened in nineteen fifty-five. Um, or maybe maybe it was a little bit after that. But I'm almost certain. Or it was before, that, that but year. I could be wrong. Fifty-five. No, I, that's a few I, years before my mom was born. Right. That, it was fifty-five. Thank you. Good job, Appreciate brother. <laughs> okay. Um, 1955 was Emmett Till, uh, but we've had several hundred incidences before that one. So, and more. I mean, yeah, and, and the Black Lives Matter movement began long before you and I were even thought. Mm -hmm. You know, before our parents were even thought about. And and that's what I'm alluding to when you having that conversation. It is it's so much bigger than what's going on today even you know the, the, the tragedy that happened with George Floyd it, it kind of re-sparked the conversation but the bottom line is it, it's really been going on and it's been a movement that's been happening for much longer than 2020 and so when you're having a conversation with somebody an uncomfortable conversation at that and their narrative changes to you know the things like as I stated before, black people killing black people, you're mm -hmm. changing the, the, the subject. And that's what I'm saying. It, it it doesn't make you racist. It makes you ignorant. Because now you don't want to have a conversation about something because it's uncomfortable for you. So it's ignorant when people say black lives matter. But then they say, but black people kill each other or whatever. That's It would be no different than if I was sitting up here with you mm -hmm. and me and you were having a conversation about uh, same-sex marriages. Let's, mm -hmm. let's say that. We, 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 we disagreeing with that whole thing. But we think that incest is okay. You get what I mean? Nah, that don't coincide. What, but, <laughs> what, but what I'm saying is, if you if you saying that one thing is okay, that's wrong, but you disagreeing with something else that you also think is wrong, that it doesn't make sense. And I'm not but, and saying, what I'm saying it like is, that. But it's different being a black person, and I just don't. Ag I don't agree with none of it, honestly. So that's why I feel like. Okay, but that's that's exactly what I'm saying though. It's because you don't agree with any of us, so you shouldn't bring in another topic to change the subject when that's not agreed upon either. You get what I'm saying? Like, so for for a white person to have a conversation and say, "Oh, well, look, black lives can't matter because black people kill black people," that's still not right. You change the subject, but it's still not right. None of it is right. I don't, I don't understand. Are you agreeing or disagreeing with me? I'm saying none of it is right. 
Okay. Okay. The police brutality, black people killing each other, I don't agree with none of it. And I just, and a lot of people don't like what I have to say, but I'm, I'm very honest and I'm blunt. And I feel like you cannot expect other people to value your life when you're out here doing the same thing, if not worse, to your own kind. And no, you may not be a police officer. You may not be nobody of the law. But don't get all bent out of shape because somebody of the law goes and do something because of, look at how you're acting. And that, that that's not even talking about being loud and rowdy. It's the it's the jealousy. It's the wanting what other people want. You know, like yo, so, you can have this too. Two heads are better than one. And there's no need to kill off your own kind just because y'all y'all got hard times. You growing up, you grew up in a bad neighborhood or, or anything like that. Yo, you give these you amp these people up and you give them basically the the freedom to say what they gotta say. To judge you, to point their finger, to be like, okay, how can you get mad at this when you got, like, it's not, none of it is right. Of course, nobody is agreeing with none of it. So let me ask you a question. If a woman hits a man, and forgive me, but I'm about to use it as an example. If a woman hits a man, and the man retaliates and hits the woman back, who is wrong? They both wrong. Okay. Who is more wrong? They both wrong. I feel like it's on the same level. Because a woman, you did wrong for knowing that this man strength is way he's way stronger than you. You and some women really be expecting men to not hit them back. And but that man should also have self restraint to know he doesn't have And so that should back. that woman. You're absolutely so right. So come but on now, it's all wrong. He, no, he's twice as wrong. That is not an equal thing. Wrong is wrong. For every action, there's a reaction. Really? And listen, you a different tune. Li- no, listen. I'm not saying, Chris. Don't do that, and especially <laughs> on camera. I am not saying any of it is right. He would not have felt like he had to defend. Look, some men get. Do you not agree that some men get abused? You don't think I that? Agree. Okay, why they get abused? There's a multitude of reasons. Some of them are too nice, too generous. Um, they are naive. Naive. So all those things, it doesn't coincide or align with somebody just being in love with that woman. And they, oh, you could just do whatever you, you want to do to me. I just love you so much. You could call it that. It's craziness. Okay. Okay. All right. So remove yourself from the situation as a whole. Right. I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying. No, I got you. From both parties, if you remove yourself from being in all this turmoil or being looked upon that oh you wrong you wrong for every action there's a reaction that is true however i believe that the self-restraint a man should have should allow you to say you know what you can walk around this situation you can restrain the woman without hitting her if that makes sense because yes she hit you however she cannot do most women cannot do the same amount of damage by hitting a man that a man can do by hitting a woman. And that's, that's just true. the bottom line. That's you, true. You, we are here to protect women, to um, defend, not to harm. So, But we know stuff like that is actually going on. I, I, I wanted to use that as an example, but it wasn't a good example because you did not agree the same way that I, I, I thought you would have. Don't say what you thought I was going to do because, like I said, right is right and well, wrong is wrong. Yeah, no, and I can't sit here and just be like, oh, that's okay. Like, it, none of it is okay. And then he, from a man's point of view, you're probably going to say that. Let me look, let, use us for instance. Look at you compared to me. <laughs> Come on now. No, I'm not about to. You can't the, use us as an example. Why can't we use us as an example? Because you wouldn't then hit Then that me, ain't I right. Wouldn't hit then you. that ain't. That's what I'm saying. I rest my case, but, everybody. But, <laughs> Order in the court. But, <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the instances of, of people who have those things happen and, and for a man that loses himself for that moment to hit a woman back, um, he he's a lot of times crucified by people in a sense that you would be objective to the fact that he put his hands on a woman regardless of what she did what happened prior to that 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 altercation coming of fruition you cannot as a man lose yourself long enough to put your hands on a woman 
that's why a lot of times you you see the assault charges that are trumped up for, against men and this domestic violence and it's this and it's that um and you almost immediately go to jail and then what another man would do to you if he found out that you hit a woman but that's you know what, what I mean? like, that's what would be in my mind is you know some women actually go to jail for defending themselves whether it's against rape or you know being abused or whatever like yo you you if you take it too far and you for your what um self defense they going to take you to jail it does it doesn't matter they don't got no pics bro well no that, and that's true too but my my point in what i was attempting to I know go what for you were saying. Was stop doing that, that. <laughs> there is things that are both wrong but by pointing out one wrong you're not overstating the other thing and and that's the issue that i'm having when people have the conversation again i'll say mm -hmm. with stating that because black police matter, police are killing black brutality. people and black people are killing black people it's almost like a white person is saying why should i care about you if you don't care about you and what you're saying is still wrong it doesn't matter if the the man hit the woman first or the woman hit the man first it's still wrong and, it, but I, that, and i do yo i feel the same i mean we could just go on to the next one because <laughs> i'm not i'm not with it like if you are a black person okay it is, it is, yo, just because black people may be stronger than white people, just because, you know, what? Look, it is, it is what it is. We the chosen. Just because you are stronger does not mean you have to carry yourself in an irate way. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to, yo, you are what you are. And when you feel like you got to go and prove it, Yo, you can land yourself in some serious harm. That's all I'm saying. No, none of it is right. Y'all, I said, none of it is right. Okay? In the Bible, it say, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Okay? Oh, I'm rubbing it here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to prove yourself. That's all I'm saying. Like, and you just carry yourself. If you carry yourself like a king, like a queen, like a prince, like a princess, you know, you are royalty. You know, I don't see no kings getting all crazy and rowdy up on their throne. I don't see queens act like that. It's off with his head. Next, I don't gotta I don't gotta deal with this. You know, and that's the same attitude you gotta have, not I'm about to kill you, I'm about to go do this, I'm about to go blah, 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 that's, not blah, blah. Off, that's not off with his head right there. Yo, oh my god. <laughs> Yo, do you not got a team? I'm sorry, say that. Do again. you not have a team? You're not going to have people that's backing you up, that's standing behind you, you know? Okay. And it's, okay. it's not about, you know, you having to go in. Basically, I feel like the only team you need is God, especially when you know you're doing something right. Especially when you know something right. We talk about you, two different things. Here. And when you don't feel like that, then that's a lack of faith, a lack of belief. So We're talking about two different things. It's here. not two different things, and that's the problem. Again, everybody want to take God out of everything. No, I'm not taking God out of it at okay. all. But what I'm saying is I stopped having a conversation with this man because his belief was that... Excuse me, <clears throat> I stopped having a conversation <laughs> with this man because his belief was that our lives don't matter because we don't treat our lives as if they don't matter. And that's just not all black people. Did he say those words? No, but in the context of his argument, if you change the conversation to black people kill black people, what are you saying? That it don't make sense for you to talk about the police coming at you if whole time you and the people like you is out here doing stupid stuff. Exactly. So when you make that statement, you're saying black lives do not matter because y'all killing each other. I didn't say that. But I'm just saying you can't get upset for He's somebody insinuating. who's on the outside looking in. Trust me, I'm not upset about it. I understand like what it. he. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I just don't have to continue to associate with somebody who believes and you, that my life does not matter. You absolutely don't. But I don't think he said, Chris, your life don't matter. Am I black? He, he said, Chris, your life don't matter. Okay. My family's black. Did he say, Chris, you and your family's life don't matter? <laughs> don't do this on air. Oh, okay. Because basically, when they say Black Lives Matter, are they not talking about the stuff that already didn't happen? That's where it came from. Police brutality. The stuff that already taking place. It's happening today, every day. 
the inequalities that, that but if it happened then it, you can't take it back it's already done and it happened so that's why all this stuff has come about because of what has already happened he's not talking about Chris you're gonna go out here you're gonna do something dumb or you're gonna get in a fight with somebody black but and they you treat us all the same okay Chris so, so, do you disagree with that okay Chris I say I'm gonna let my yay be yay and my nay be nay <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna move on to the she next she said topic. preach I don't know if you talking to him it's like I'm just joking. oh she have a question do Who all men say I'm not saying that like dude I know that <laughs> Exactly, that's what I'm saying. No disrespect, Nene. We'll talk about this later, girl. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. You should have the, the camera in the middle, but they can't, I can't see read us. The comments, you're right. We're gonna have to figure that. I out. know we're gonna we, have to. Right. Like it's, it's fine. I meant to get us uh, tripods. That's I, a like good little idea. tripods right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. All right. right. We're going to move on to the next Okay, topic. I'm sorry. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's kind of mend this back together. I'm sorry. No, we started late. Maybe it seems like we had a little bit of a disagreement. No, I'm not saying because we time. had no I'm disagreement. We're not even like that. that we um, could not agree on anything and still be like, hey, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, this subject was supposed to be about educating our people. So what I'm going to get into is... For our young adults, um, mm-hmm. and and I, I when I say young adults, I mean like even starting as early as ten. There's so many things that we can begin to teach our children. Yes, um, at that age to prepare them for adulthood because we are just growing up so fast. Um, you blink your eyes and you you dealing with adult kids mm-hmm. and they making <laughs> their own rules, their own decisions, and they're not always good and good for them. But how quickly they learn. The responsibility I know, especially for what I do for a living, um, I encounter eighteen to twenty and twenty-two year old kids mm-hmm. every single day. And um, as sad as it may sound, I, I came across a young woman um, last week, if I'm not mistaken, that didn't know what a money order was mm-hmm. or how to how to fill one out. Mm-hmm. And it's things like that when you see it. Um, it's like wow, like. This is something that your parents should have taught you. It's so little, but... Mm-hmm. Y- but it's, yeah. it's, it goes so far to it's know. It's overlooked. Yeah, so um, things like building credit, mm-hmm. um, changing the mindset of our, our children to think like an entrepreneur yeah. and not like a, a worker or an mm-hmm. employee. Um, how to be independent mm-hmm. and not rely on a man, if you're a woman, or a woman, if you're a man. To do everything for you. Mm-hmm. Men, we need to learn how to cook, mm-hmm. how to clean. We don't need women to do those things for us. It, yes, it would be nice mm-hmm. if we had a woman by our side that did those things. But it is not. it should not be a requirement or a deal breaker if she cannot. Because you can do the same thing. And you can teach her if she don't know how. Mm-hmm. Um, for, for women, uh, we need to know, you know how to get the high paying jobs and the um uh, I didn't really have anything for women I'm so sorry I can't uh, believe it that. that is so wrong <laughs> it's not that is so wrong <laughs> wow um how to contribute to a household and not be so reliant on a man for um not necessarily protection mm-hmm. but Women uh, and we have this already. Women are very strong and independent. Um, being breadwinners in the household, being exceptional mothers and and um, heads of households. Uh, see that, so that sounds like a really. Today we see you saying that men like, has the the physical strength. Women has the mental strength. And I, I say it all the time. I, yeah. I, I, I not to say that I'm not mentally strong. No, we're not saying that at all. We're not saying that at all. For, for the people who are really close and, and near to my heart, they, they have such great mental stability and mental toughness right. that um, I'm working on personally mm-hmm. because I'm not as mentally strong. Like You could quite easily piss me off. Um, not necessarily get me out of my game, but piss me off. And it's like, I have a lot of self-control, but I my answer is always to just be like, fuck, let's, let's be something up. Let's Did you just else. cuss? No, You're I not didn't. cussing <laughs> on Rum TV. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. But yeah, I mean, um, so I I commend the people who have a lot of mental toughness, um, and that's something else that we as parents should be instilling in our children at a young age and, and preparing them for, because um, 
just going back to the topic we was already talking about. Mm-hmm. You can't get pissed off when you're outside or on the streets or, or getting pulled over by a police officer and just start running off at your mouth. Oh, really? You saying that? Look, I completely agree that you conduct yourself in a, a proper mm-hmm. way when you when you are dealing with the police. But what I'm saying is it's still not right the way they're being treated. That's true. So That is absolutely true. With, with that in mind, yes, you're supposed to act a certain way. But there are instances when they're acting the right way and they're still being mistreated. You know. So, but we're not going to go back to that subject. <laughs> um, we want to talk about <laughs> financial I I literacy. Your ass. <laughs> yo, oh, are you cussing on Rob I TV? I said yo ass. I ain't say yo s- <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about... Okay, um, listen, I, really quick, before we go into something me. else, and um, Mr. Wolf is going to be telling us to wrap it up soon. But really quick, um, you were saying something about teaching our young people, you know, about being entrepreneurs, you know, um, being independent. I do feel like a lot of young adults, I mean, okay, once you hit 18, you know, you're, young, you're considered a young adult. A lot of young adults don't want to hear the positivity that their parents speak to them and they think that their parents want to take fun away from them or just you know want them to do things you know trying to be a parent like no that's not the case y'all have to understand that our parents went through a lot of stuff in their day like a lot of stuff stuff that they don't even want to see us and our children go through their grandchildren and you know, generations after that, they don't want to see that. So it's like, okay, if I can talk to you about it and I can put this bug in your head and your ear, and I can let you know, like, look, this didn't work for me. And then times is harder now. Technology is everywhere. There's temptation everywhere. You know, there's people who are not even, they're not even trying to, you know, better themselves. And then we're like, oh, but that's my friend. Oh, but I want to be around them. Oh, but they got money. They get money quick. Or they drive us something nice. And you don't know what they did to get that. You know, like, a lot of y'all just, it's really imperative that you just sit down with your parents. Sit down with your grandparents if you have them. And if you don't know, reach out to somebody who do know. Because tomorrow is not promised. And to just piggyback off of what you were just saying, um... I can tell you, I have so many, and you know this, my closest friends are all older than me. Same. So <laughs> I can always reach out to them, especially when I run into something. I feel like I be cheating the system because <laughs> I, before I ever make a move, and it's not because I can't make a decision for myself, but because I want to make the best decision mm-hmm. and not have to be set back um, by my ignorance and by my lack of knowledge, my mistakes, I'll ask them. I'll hit my homeboys up like, yo. I got to do this. What should I do? How mm-hmm. should I go about it? What mm-hmm. should I expect? Like, what is it going to be like? Yeah. And, and, and just kind of to pick their brain and the, to, to ask these questions before I do something. So now I already know going in, this is what I should expect. Yeah. And this is how to handle this so that I don't, again, I say make a mistake or, or cost myself money or time wasted. That's going to set me back from the things that I have in store. And I can tell you, um, I I give y'all a little story. This happened to me just a couple days ago, actually. Had an issue with my car, and I had to get my car looked at. Um, And when I did, um, nine times out of ten, this is my first time having a car that I I bought on my own. Mm -hmm. So, um, all the (laughs) Z-Lot. So, (laughs) in this instance, um, I actually had a mechanic go and look at my car. My old car, uh, my grandmother gave it to me, and because she gave it to me, we weren't really expecting, you know, a ton out of the car. So if it had an issue, nine times out of ten, we just tried to fix it ourselves. Mm-hmm. My dad's always worked on cars, so he teaches me how to fix a lot of stuff in the car. But in this instance, um, I decided to take my car, or I was informed because my car was still under warranty that I should take my car and have it looked at by the people who sold me the car. I took mm-hmm. it to them. They ran a diagnostic on the car and charged me. For the diagnostic and could not fix my car. And how much was so, that, Chris? That was two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that pissed me <laughs> off because I'm like, well, when I called and told you guys, I'd already went to AutoZone prior. If you did not know, you can go to AutoZone to get a free diagnostic done. I'd had that done, 
So I knew what was wrong with the car. Mm-hmm. I just needed them to fix what was wrong with the car. Mm-hmm. They couldn't fix it and instead sends me to the manufacturer who runs another diagnostic on the car that this time I no, this time I don't have to pay for it because my car is under warranty and I took it to the manufacturer. However, I still had to pay f- to get the car fixed after paying two hundred dollars for the diagnostic. Mm-hmm. Right. So things like that. Now, had I did what I was supposed to do, call some people up, ask the right questions, as opposed to jumping the gun and saying, Let me call the number for the warranty, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have got the game and run around. And those are the type of things that we're telling our people, um, you know, educate your kids not to be nosy, not to be involved and make decisions for everything in their life. Mm-hmm. But that's something that you shouldn't be being set back for, um, especially in a time like this with, you know, COVID-19, people not working. Every dollar, and even if this wasn't going on, every dollar you make is essential. Mm-hmm. We don't got money to waste. That's right. And that was completely a waste of money on my end. But my homeboy Mike always tell me, ignorance costs money. So educate yourself. Oh, I like when that. When he say that, I know exactly what he mean. Because had I known better, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have paid. Or I wouldn't have took my car yeah. there to get it diagnosed when I already mm-hmm. knew what was right. wrong. <laughs> and I told you, <laughs> <laughs> I told you, Christopher. You know but what? it's okay. It's okay. You live and you learn. It's all right. I mean, you you can make that money back. You probably already did. I did make that money back. <laughs> See, so you're good. But that's that's um, gonna be my little story for y'all. Um, Got something, I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna wrap up the show. Um I feel like this was a good topic. Educating our people, you know, shouting out the college friends, you know, it was very unfortunate of what happened to the thirteen year old. Um prayers go out to him. Prayers go out to the two friends that that you know bought yes, the, God the bless deeply. You yes, guys. absolutely on your success. Congratulations, you know, to everybody who are succeeding and you know have accomplishments that are are they're not going un- unnoticed but here at Rum TV we want to talk about it. Yes, and then I just want to encourage our moms and, and and dads um anybody listening in on our show um if you guys have opportunities to eat dinner as a family with your kids. Yes, please eat dinner um, together. You know, if you want to mom, if you want to share a recipe with your son or your daughter, it is not a terrible idea to tell them that they can't go outside and that they need to watch you make that macaroni and cheese the right way. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, I mean, whatever whatever y'all are doing in the house, there's so many things that we can teach our kids. Game night is important. Um, Family time is always important. I love game night. Me too. I can't. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, it's just so, so, so many things. And, and tomorrow is not promised, so why, start, why not start today? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um. I just just appreciate every moment, everybody. Um, that's all I got. Okay, well, I'm going to say one more thing. Y'all, Rum TV, Royal Urban Media, we're growing. And it's through the grace of God that we're still here. You know, please, nobody, don't feel obligated. But if you would like to donate to the show, anything, Anything counts. Anything matters. Anything matters. Rum TV matters. It would really help us out. <laughs> we appreciate y'all. You want to shout out to Cash App? Uh, Rum TV One. Rum TV One, y'all. Cash App. <laughs> appreciate A dollar, y'all. fifty cent, to anything. Like we are not hard up on that. And Chris, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Absolutely, thank you. Y'all. Thank you for the opportunity. Chris is dope, y'all. Mister Wilbur dope. Brought us dope. Everybody dope. We thank y'all. Y'all support. Rum TV episode 12, we over and we out. We out. <laughs> Appreciate y'all.